I am continuing my reading. What I'm doing in this series is to read through the entire standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This consists of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. I am reading in a chronological order of events, not according to publication or volume, so I will be skipping around a bit as I move along. So we are now in Ezekiel chapter 32. We did read the first, or the second half of chapter 33 because it seems to take place a little before the rest of this portion of Ezekiel. But now we are going to be reading 32 through 39. So, and remember, again, this is in the 12th year. So this is about 18 months after the fall of the city of Jerusalem. Jeremiah has already been carried captive into Egypt. He's been dragged into Egypt against his will by the rest, by the remnant in Judah. So that is where we are at right now. Now we pick this up in chapter 32 of Ezekiel. Ezekiel laments for the fearful fall of Pharaoh and of Egypt. And it came to pass in the twelfth year, in the twelfth month, in the first day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation for Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and say unto him, Thou art like a young lion of the nations, and thou art as a whale in the seas. And thou camest forth with thy rivers, and troublest the waters with thy feet, and foulest their rivers. Thus saith the Lord God, I will therefore spread out my net over thee with a company of many people, and they shall bring thee up in my net. Then will I leave thee upon the land, I will cast thee forth upon the open field, and will cause all the fowls of the heaven to remain upon thee, and I will fill the beasts of the whole earth with thee. And I will lay thy flesh upon the mountains, and will fill the valleys with their height. I will also water with thy blood the land wherein thou swimmest, even to the mountains, and the rivers shall be full of thee. And when I shall put thee out, I will cover the heaven and make the stars thereof dark. I will cover the sun with a cloud, and the moon shall not give her light. All the bright lights of heaven will I make dark over thee, and set darkness upon thy land, saith the Lord God. I will also vex the hearts of many people, when I shall bring thy destruction among the nations into the countries which thou hast not known. Yea, I will make many people amazed at thee, and their kings shall be horribly afraid for thee, when I shall brandish my sword before them, and they shall tremble at every moment, every man for his own life in the day of thy fall. Egypt's fall is going to be absolutely devastating. It says they've they troubled the water. They've spread out among the people, but wherever they're gone, they're going to be destroyed. And the people, the foreigners, the people who were in awe of Egypt will be terrified, will be just struck dumb at the destruction of it, because the destruction will be so complete. Verse 11. For thus saith the Lord God, The sword of the king of Babylon shall come upon thee. By the swords of the mighty will I cause thy multitude to fall, the terrible of the nations, all of them, and they shall spoil the pomp of Egypt, and all the multitude thereof shall be destroyed. I will destroy also the beasts thereof from beside the great waters. Neither shall the foot of man trouble them any more, nor the hoofs of beasts trouble them. Then will I make their waters deep, and cause their rivers to run like oil, and the Lord saith the Lord God. When I shall make the land of Egypt desolate, and the country shall be destitute of that whereof it was full, when I shall smite all them that dwell therein, then shall they know that I am the Lord. This is the lamentation wherewith they shall lament her. The daughters of the nations shall lament her, they shall lament for her, even for Egypt, and for all her multitude, saith the Lord God. So again, it's going to not just be a destruction of the people, but a destruction of the economy, a destruction of the place, of everything, and the people will mourn for her. Because Egypt at this time, Egypt is still a very powerful nation, both militarily but also very economically. And the destruction of her is going to cause people to mourn for the, for the loss of that economic source. Verse 17. It came to pass also in the twelfth year, in the fifteenth day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, wail for the multitude of Egypt, and cast them down, even her and the daughters of the famous nations, unto the nether parts of the earth, with them that go down into the pit. Whom dost thou pass in beauty? Go down, and be thou laid with the uncircumcised. They shall fall in the midst of them that are slain by the sword. She is delivered to the sword. Draw her and all her multitudes. The strong among the mighty shall speak unto him out of the midst of hell with them that help him. They are gone down, they lie uncircumcised, slain by the sword. Asher is there, and all her company, his graves are about him, all of them slain, fallen by the sword. 
whose graves are set in the sides of the pit, and her company is, fe- is round about her grave, all of them slain, fallen by the sword, which caused terror in the land of the living. There is Elam and all her multitude round about her grave, all of them slain, fallen by the sword, which are gone down uncircumcised into the nether parts of the earth, which caused their terror in the land of the living, yet have they come borne their shame with them that go down to the pit. They have set her a bed in the midst of the slain with all her multitude. Her graves are round about him, all of them uncircumcised, slain by the sword. Though their terror was caused in the land of the living, yet have they borne their shame with them that go down to the pit. He is put in the midst of them that be slain. There is Meshach, Tubal, and all her multitude. Her graves are round about them, are round about him, all of them uncircumcised, slain by the sword, though they caused their terror in the land of the living. And they shall not lie with the mighty that are fallen of the uncircumcised, which are gone down to hell with, the, with their weapons of war. And they have laid their swords under their heads, but their iniquity shall be upon their bones, though they were the terror of the mighty in the land of the living. Yea, thou shalt be broken in the midst of the uncircumcised, and shalt lie with them that are slain with the sword. There is Edom, her kings, and all her princes, which with their might are laid by them that were slain by the sword. They shall lie with the uncircumcised, and with them that go down to the pit. There be the princes of the north, all of them, and all the Zidonians, which are gone down with the slain. With their terror they are ashamed of their might. And they lie uncircumcised with them that be slain by the sword, and bear their shame with them that go down to the pit. Pharaoh shall see them, and shall be comforted over all his multitude, Even Pharaoh and all his army slain by the sword, saith the Lord God. For I have caused my terror in the land of the living, and he shall be laid in the midst of the uncircumcised, with them that are slain with the sword, even Pharaoh and all his multitude, saith the Lord God. The first half of this chapter is in the twelfth month, but the first day of the month. This last part is spoken in the fifteenth day of the month. So it's still the twelfth month of the twelfth year, but it is two weeks later. And then we get this list. It says, Egypt is going to be with those in the nether parts of the earth, with them that go down into the pit. This is talking about spirit prison. All these references to hell, to the pit, to the nether parts of the earth. This is the spirit prison where the unbaptized, or in this case, the uncircumcised, go when they die. And we have in this list, they say he's going down with all the rest that go into the pit. And who are those that are going into the pit? Well, we have the nation of Asher as mentioned. They're going down into the pit. The nation of Elam, they'll be going down into the pit. Meshech, Tubal, and her multitudes, Elam, uh, Edom, all these nations are being mentioned. That they're all going down. To the, these, these were all strong, powerful nations at one time. But they all died. They all were destroyed by God. And their people, being uncircumcised, are going down into the pit. They are going to go into the spirit prison. Despite that, in while they were alive, while they were flourishing as a nation, they cause terror among all those around them. Despite their power in this life, they're all going to the same place. They are all going into the spirit prison because they are uncircumcised. They are all receiving that same reward, just like Egypt will. That's a pretty good description. I like the list of nations there. We're going to leave that here, and we'll pick this up in chapter 33. So we'll see you there.